Personal Kanban is really simple to get started, so let's dive in and show you how you can create your first personal Kanban system. The most basic personal Kanban has three columns. To do, so all of the things that are options for you to put time into. Doing, which are the things that you've already invested time in. And then, of course, done, the things that you've completed. So a basic personal Kanban system will have a workflow that goes from left to right with these three columns. And then underneath you have all of your work items. Each work item is represented by one post-it. And as you do work on these things, you can just move them across to show their current status. So that's the simplest personal Kanban that you can use. You'll probably find, though, that this isn't enough. I'm going to show you a couple of the columns that I find most people use in their personal Kanban system. On the to-do side, this area can get piled up pretty quickly with quite a lot of things. And one of the things we want to avoid with our time management system is spending way too much time reprocessing choices that really, uh, in that moment, aren't really good options. So by creating a bit more visibility here, we can reduce the amount of overhead it takes to figure out what is the next thing I should be spending time on. So we're going to add a column here called today. So today is like to do, except it has a much shorter time frame. Out of all of my choices here, what are the things that I haven't started that I feel I can or need to accomplish today? So in doing so, as I go through my day, I don't need to be looking at all of these anymore. I can just be focused on these and, of course, the ones that I've already started. If that still seems like not quite enough granularity, another simple option here is to add in what's called a ready column. So ready just means that when there's room freed up in my today, that I can choose from a smaller set of options out of my to-dos. And to make this a reasonable amount, we typically want to add a limit to our ready column, say maybe four or five items. We may also want to add other limits to these other columns, and that's something we'll get into a bit later. Um, as you find sort of your optimal amount of work that you want to be taking on at different parts in your process. In the, in the doing section, there are tasks that we're working on, but they're in a state right now where we can't do anything until someone else does something. So they're kind of stuck waiting on a response usually from another person. Maybe you've uh, left a phone message with someone, maybe you've placed an order for some uh, product and you can't act on it again until you've gotten that response. So we don't want to lose track of those things but we don't want to keep reprocessing all of the stuff that is in our doing but we can't act on. So by adding another column called waiting on or sometimes known as the pen, whatever name works for you is, is the best name of course. We can we can break this up and see kind of what's in the state where I can act on and what are the state where I just have to you know pay attention to those things. Okay, so now we're getting a lot more visibility into our workflow. Now that we have this approach, um, we can further add clarity in all of our work items here. You see they're all just one color. But oftentimes we want to make choices based on the kind of work that we're doing. So take some time and write down 
the different kinds of work that you want to manage and see if it would be helpful for you to use different colors to manage those. So for instance, you might have administration work, you might have a particular project, you might be doing some, say, some self-improvement or other types of investments that you know often aren't um, urgent but are definitely important. Or you have things that are uh, a fixed date, for example. So you can use different colors to, to visualize those things. So let's replace a few of these here now. In this way too now we can start to see as we're looking at our board how many items are in each color. Gives us a sense for where we're spending our time. So for example, if green here is those investment things, you can see we're not really giving that much attention at the moment for, for whatever reason. As well, we can also group things by using uh, different lanes. In particular, if you have work that takes on a different workflow. So you may want to have a, a, another horizontal lane with the column names for each of the steps in the workflow. Again, you want to make all that explicit so that you have a, a lot of clarity and understanding as to where things are in the process. So it's, there's less thinking about what to do and more focus just on doing. You might also just want to have different groups of, of post-its by buckets. That was in some of the sample Kanban, Kanbans you saw before where we have all our yellows here, oranges and, and greens. And then across those then we can decide where we want to um, make our next choices for things to, to work on. On the done side here you see we've kind of kept it plain and simple. Obviously as we decide what things we want to learn about our system, we can use the done column, which really contains a lot of rich, valuable information to help us learn a lot more about how we do our work. And we'll explore that in a little more detail a bit later. Of course, there are other ways that you can vary on this very common approach to setting up your Kanban board. Instead of going left to right, you could decide to go top down in terms of your flow. You can use some fun post-its. So, for example, some people like to use uh, hearts or flowers to denote those things that uh, they really want to get to, that they really enjoy. So this reminds them visually what's, um, what's really satisfying for them. Also, for things like uh, tasks that have a fixed date, you can annotate them with the date right on the post-it. So, for example, this one is due June 3rd, so I can just add that to my post-it. I can visually see again which post-its have this, this fixed date deadline. One area I haven't touched on here are those repetitive tasks, those things that we have to do on an ongoing basis. You want to have those visualized too, because it's really important that we really see everything that's going on in our lives. So in a next video, we'll take a look at how you can visualize repetitive tasks, not only to get them done, but to learn how to get them done better.